Well, we get back on our quick jack project here. We've got all our parts and pieces kind of laid out. Got the instruction book open. We've got these two elbow fittings that, uh, from the looks of things, screw into the cylinders. There's two cylinders you got to take the plugs out the bottom and screw those angled fittings into the uh, cylinder. And uh, you got to be careful how you orient them so that they don't uh, point off in the wrong direction. And we got two short hoses and these hoses uh, will screw on to those fittings. And we have two long hoses and then we have all of these quick disconnect fittings that go in various places. I assume one side is the male and the other side is the female and they connect the power unit to the long hoses and uh, probably the long hoses to the short hoses. We'll figure that out and uh, get everything put together and see if we can get this thing to work. We've got all our hoses plumbed up and uh, a couple of them installed. We got the two elbows screw into the cylinders here and the lines run out under the back and we have our long lines with our quick disconnects on both ends and then we have our quick other end of the quick disconnects on the pump unit. The other thing we had to do is right here are two air cylinders and those uh, air cylinders needed to be pressurized to 50 psi not more than 50 psi. Now we got lucky and from uh, old race car days, this is a gizmo that we use to pressurize the shock absorbers. It screws onto the valve here, and then you have a thumb wheel that you tighten up, and then you can see your pressure on the gauge, and you put the air in this side. So we were able to, to pressurize those cylinders right to 50 PSI. Um, most people aren't going to have that, so you really got to be careful. Um, if you have a little compressor, just set the output to 50 PSI uh, and, uh, and don't go over that. So that's, uh, that's the program so far. We've got the two lines, the two short lines, the two long lines, the power unit. Uh, I suspect that um, the next thing we're going to have to do is put some fluid in it. So we'll keep going along here and see what happens. So we had to move down to the floor. We, uh, we hooked up the hydraulic lines, <laughs> even though we were reading the directions and they sort of skip over the part about hooking up the lines. I don't know why that is. And just talk about filling the reservoir and the bleeder valve and then tell you how to bleed the system. So you got to bleed the air out of the system. Um, they tell you there's a five millimeter hex key or an Allen key or a screw that you need to bleed the cylinders, but it ain't five millimeter. The one I got is three sixteenths. And uh, now they want you to pick up the tail end of the frame and put that stack of blocks. I don't know if you can see it there under the tail end under the back of the there's a plate there under the back where the cylinder is now <laughs> I want to know who, who the guy is that's going to pick that hundred pound frame up with one hand and put that stack of blocks under there with the other hand that'd be a nice touch we better call we better call a rock or somebody to do that <laughs> I sure as hell ain't going to do it well, we managed to use our floor jack to uh, jack up the back end of these ramps, these quick jacks, and get the stack of blocks under there so that uh, we can bleed the cylinder. Now we put a little over two quarts of Dextron automatic transmission fluid in the reservoir. You can use hydraulic oil or automatic transmission fluid. And we hooked everything up and we got them to go up and down 
and we got leaks everywhere. I've got uh, probably one, two, at least three, if not four fittings leaking where the quick disconnects go onto the hoses. So in the fine print with the liquid thread sealant they give you, well, you got to give it time to cure before you can use it. So I don't know how long that is, but uh, we didn't do that. So I don't know if that's the deal or not, but I'm not liking it. I mean, come on. <laughs> you shouldn't have leaks and fitting. You either got crappy fittings or something. I don't know what the story is there. It's a shame because this is a nice unit. So we'll let it sit for today and uh, come back tomorrow figure out what we're going to do with the fittings. They tell you not to use thread sealant tape. I do know that they make a special thread sealant tape for hydraulics. Uh, I'm just going to have to look into it. I'm not really into this liquid stuff, but uh, you can't use uh, anything that's going to dissolve or come apart and then get into the hydraulic system and monkey everything up. So we're going to have to look at that, see if we can get these leaks cleaned up. Uh, and then we've started to bleed the air out of the cylinders. I think we've got most of it, but we still got to go through the process. There's no point in keep pumping automatic transmission fluid out on the floor and making a mess. So we'll fix the leaks first and then get back to the process. Well, we're a couple days later on this uh, quick jack project. A um, couple of different things. We uh, had some serious hydraulic leaks where the fittings screw onto the hoses. Um, the kit comes with uh, some dipsy doodle Chinese sealant for the fittings uh, that is worthless. So you're really not supposed to use Teflon tape on hydraulic fittings. Uh, so we went, um, I don't know, some farm store and got some really good quality uh, American made fitting sealant and uh, took everything apart, cleaned it, put the proper sealant on, put it back together and let it sit overnight. And one day turned into another day because we had a special assignment we had to go on. So uh, here we are and we got back to uh, bleeding the cylinders again and that kind of a funky deal one one they both both platforms if you want to call them that went up evenly but uh, as soon as we let go of the pendant uh, the one there on the left wanted to drop back down again uh, while the one on the right just stayed there and I mean that's with no weight on them so I'd hate to see what would happen when you put the car on there we've kind of worked them up and down a couple of times and uh, I think we put them up there as you see them now I don't know they're up about six or eight inches and they've both been sitting there evenly um, for an hour or so now really the next step I think is to uh, put them back down on the ground and get the the pile of blocks out from under them put them back down on the ground and uh, get a car or some kind of vehicle on these things and see what happens but uh, it, this ain't this ain't a five minute deal uh, it's not take it out of the box and plug and play that's for sure but we'll see we'll, we'll keep working and uh, see if we get a car on these things and see how that goes well we're up in the air um, I can tell you that uh, we got a 2004 Explorer on these things. It's a pretty good sized vehicle um, and fairly heavy, probably 5,000 pounds or so. This is the 7,000 pounds series unit and uh, picked this vehicle right up. Um, looks looks good it seems to be solid on there sitting square and uh, we're 
uh, up all the way and and then down against the uh, safety locks. Uh, I will say that uh, <laughs> this ain't plug and play. Uh, they do work. Uh, takes a little bit to get them set up and going. They're not ready to go out of the box. Uh, you've got the, um, the fitting situation where now they say that uh, you can use thread sealant on the threads if you want. Uh, you have to be very careful about your Teflon tape because if you don't do it properly, you end up with Teflon tape in the hydraulic system and it uh, monkeys up the valves and you're done. So the liquid thread sealant is a better option, but in most cases you've got to wait 24 hours between uh, putting your fitting together and ready to use, otherwise you're going to have some leaks. So, so that's one thing. Um, you know, if you're an old guy with bad knees, you kind of got to crawl around on the floor to get these things positioned under the car. It's okay. I mean, at the end of the day, they do what they're supposed to do. I see uh, one little situation there at the fitting uh, on the cylinder where I don't have enough tilt or tip up in the fitting and it looks to me like when the unit's all the way up the hose has a little preload on it right at the joint there where it goes over the joint so that's something you want to look out for uh, make sure that uh, when your unit is all the way up in the air that that fitting is not and that hose is not against that bottom uh, part of the framework and uh, likewise when it's down all the way it can't stick up too high so there are a lot of little things there you need to be aware of uh, I will say this that if you get into a situation where you're trying to raise the frames a little bit to make sure that they're in the right place under the car uh, I have seen some cases where one frame because they're not up against the locks one of the frames may retract a little bit and uh, all of a sudden they're uneven and then when you go to put them back up they don't come up square so if you get into a situation where you're positioning the frames under the car you raise it up a little bit if they don't stay even drop them back down again and and start from scratch when you raise them up that way both frames come up even and don't stop until you clear the first lock so don't go up you know four or five inches and let the thing sit there uh, against the valves you want to get up on your first lift past the first safety lock and then if you want to have a look at things you can uh, let it sit back against the safety lock and then the next step is to go all the way to maximum lift now <laughs> the shop here is not real big uh, doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do this with the door closed I mean I've got a workbench over there that I could move and get the car in far enough and and um, get the door closed uh, one thing you have to remember is that this unit works through a little bit of an arc as it comes up so depending on which way you have the frames oriented the car is going to go up and towards the front or up and towards the rear so you have to account for that on the door end and have to account for it on the other end of the car make sure you leave enough space it's not a lot but it's enough and you don't want to get yourself jammed up that way uh, I don't know what else we're going to continue to use them here I do have a project on this Explorer I've got a front wheel bearing bed so that'll give us something to work on but <laughs> Uh, you got to watch your ceiling height. I'm, I'm um, up all the way with this Explorer, which is a pretty tall vehicle, and I probably have yeah, six or eight inches between the roof and my overhead door, which is in tracks up there. So, you know, just have a look around, make sure what's going on, make sure you're not going to hit anything. You know, when you put uh, the unit 
under the frame, you've got to make sure that the, your blocks are in the right place because you don't want the frame to come up against the gas tank or the exhaust or you know another cross member that might be under there. You want the whatever you're jacking up to be touching your rubber blocks. And if you're using pinch points, same thing. You've got to make sure that that those are the highest points on the jack so that when you pick the car up you're picking up on those four points and uh, not mashing anything else so it's just uh, something you're going to have to work with and figure out how it works for you and take advantage of it but uh, finally after several days the car is up in the air so that's a good thing So in a little bit of an epilogue, um, these things do work. You might want to make sure that, <laughs> that your floor is clean, otherwise you're going to get filthy dirty because there is a fair amount of getting down on the floor and putting them in place under the car and laying on the floor and making sure they come up in the right place and uh, connecting the hoses and all that sort of thing. The other thing that might be a good idea is if you can come up with uh, a way to cover your hydraulic hoses, a couple of tuba sixes or something with a, with a groove in between them, um, so that you can leave the hoses connected. You can push the jacks to the center so they're underneath the vehicle and leave the hoses connected but you don't want to run over the hoses or the fittings. So if you can make some sort of something to cover the hose so that when you run over it, you don't crush the hose, that's going to save a lot of aggravation uh, because hooking and unhooking the hoses is just a pain in the butt. So uh, we'll, we'll have a look at that, but that's something you might want to consider. Um, other than that, Seem to work, seem to be pretty good quality, uh, other than the Chinese um, goop they give you for the fittings. And, uh, you know, who knows, maybe it's okay if you let it sit 24 hours. Um, I just didn't like it, went and bought some good high strength US stuff, still let it sit 24 hours, and, and I don't have any leaks. So um, it would be nice if they used fittings that didn't require pipe dope, um, like the fittings on the cylinders where the lines screw on, uh, but that's, uh, you know, save a penny here, penny there, make a buck, you know. Um, and if it works, it works. So we'll start using them. I got a project tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how they work and uh, go from there.